All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Let's talk about the tropics. Of course, it's been the big national story the last few days because we had a major hurricane roll right across the central Florida Peninsula. That hurricane, of course, was Hurricane Milton. The good news today, it's no longer a hurricane. It is now considered a post-tropical cyclone. That means it's kind of lost the tropical characteristics, although it still has quite a bit of wind with it, but at least it is no longer a tropical system. So let's talk about where we've been for this 2024 hurricane season. We've had a lot of ups and downs and Yes, things have been a little crazy lately. We've had some pretty big systems, some monster systems hit the US. Of course, Helene and most recently Milton. So overall, we've had 13 named storms. Out of those, nine have become hurricanes, and out of those, four have become major hurricanes. Of course, we had Category 5, Hurricane Barrel, Category 4, Hurricane Helene, Category 4, Hurricane Kirk, and Milton, which blew up to become a horrific Category 5, 180 mile per hour winds before it hit Florida as a Category 3 yesterday evening, right around Siesta Key. That landfall, of course, was 8.30 p.m. local time for Florida, 7.30 p.m. central, but we continue to see improvements in the weather for Florida, so that is some good news. So, as I mentioned, Milton no longer a hurricane or a tropical storm. It is a post-tropical cyclone, and I have our satellite kind of going back over the last several hours. You will notice Milton pretty organized as it was rolling across Florida. You can see it pushing right over Tampa, but now it is looking very disorganized. It's kind of lost that hurricane and tropical storm structure kind of falling apart. Still a lot of wind with it and some rain, but it certainly is in a much weaker state at this point. But the damage is done in its wake. We're talking about millions of people across Florida, especially the Florida Peninsula still without power. Those power outages just started spiking yesterday evening, last night as this hurricane made landfall. And we've still got about 3 million people without power across the state of Florida. And just for Hillsborough County, where Temper is located, about a half million people reportedly without power at this time, 500,000. Also, we had the roof torn into shreds for the Tampa Bay Rays arena where they play. So certainly a lot of issues with Milton. We've got a lot of things going on. We had several inches of rain leading to some big time flash flooding. We had a pretty horrible tornado outbreak before Milton made landfall. And so we've got a lot of cleanup that will have to be completed before things can start to get back to normal. All right, let me talk to you about the latest with post-tropical cyclone Milton. It still has 70 mile per hour winds as of the latest 4 p.m. advisory, and it is moving pretty quickly to the east around 21 miles per hour. So notice how far away it is from Florida now. It is booking it off to the east northeast, moving pretty quickly. So that's good news. That means conditions should start to improve. Any threat for storm surge should start to subside and go down this evening, and those tropical storm Force winds have shifted to the east of Florida as well. So as we put this into motion, notice that post tropical cyclone Milton will continue moving mainly off to the east, east, northeast. And by Friday and Saturday, it should pass just to the south of Bermuda in a weaker state and it shouldn't bring too many issues to Bermuda, but there will still be a lot of cleanup, like I said, for the state of Florida. Here's some other good news. We had a ton of wind associated with Milton when it was a hurricane, and we had at one point tropical storm force winds extending basically all the way up and down the Florida Peninsula, but now that tropical storm force wind field has shifted to the east out of the state of Florida. So things should start to calm down. It will be a little gusty along part to the east coast, maybe up towards Jacksonville, Daytona Beach for a few more hours. But that really strong, potentially damaging, devastating wind is long gone. That was not the case last night, though. I want to show you some of the strongest wind gusts that we had reported with Milton when it was a hurricane and making landfall around Tampa, St. Pete, Sarasota, 105 mile per hour wind gusts. 
right around Tampa Bay. Venice reported a 107 mile per hour wind gust. How about 102 mile per hour wind gusts for the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport? Down around St. Petersburg, there were tons of issues. Almost 20 inches of rain for parts of St. Pete and also a wind gust right around 101 miles per hour. Winter Haven dealing with a gust near 80 miles per hour. So those winds, of course, are strong enough to blow shingles off the roof, maybe tear bigger chunks of the roof off, as we saw with the Tampa Bay Rays area where they play. So it is certainly going to take some time to clean up all of the mess left behind, all that debris left behind by Milton. Another big story was the rainfall. Rainfall was tremendous before the landfall of Milton, during the landfall of Milton, and even afterwards. You can see some of the grays and whites across parts of Central Florida indicating where we did have that heaviest rain. And a lot of that rain came down across Tampa and St. Petersburg. In fact, around Tampa, St. Pete, anywhere from a foot of rain all the way up to close to 20 inches of rain that fell. And a lot of that fell within a 24 hour period. So that is what led to several flash flood warnings. We had several flash flood emergencies for Lakeland, for Tampa, for St. Petersburg. And that swath of heaviest rain actually extended on up into the Orlando area. In fact, up around Orlando, there were close to 10 inches of rainfall reported there. So there were water rescues and flash flood emergencies there as well. So that was one of the really big stories last night and this morning. Just a ton of rain coming out of Hurricane Milton. Another thing, Milton remained a hurricane all the way across Florida as it made landfall just south of Sarasota. It was a category three and then it rolled across and weakened to a category one as it made it towards the east coast of the Florida Peninsula, but it was still a hurricane. So a ton of wind for people across Florida to deal with. This was the really big story yesterday before landfall of Hurricane Milton. There was a huge tornado outbreak. This is not your typical tornado outbreak that you think of when you have a land falling tropical system. Usually you have those outer rain bands that pulse up, produce some showers, some strong to severe storms, and a few of them may get enough energy and enough spin and start to rotate and produce a brief weak tornado. But this was more like a classic tornado alley tornado outbreak where we had a couple of very large, strong, long lived tornadoes that stayed on the ground for quite some time and did quite a bit of damage and actually caused multiple fatalities. In fact, there were over 40 tornado reports yesterday across central and southern portions of Florida. There were some over towards Fort Myers, Fort Pierce, down around West Palm Beach, just to the south and east of Orlando near Miami. So just numerous tornadoes reported. Another history making thing with this tornado outbreak will be the fact that we had a record 126 tornado warnings in Florida yesterday. That is a record for the state. It's just not that common to have that many tornado warnings and that many reported tornadoes with a tropical system. So this was very scary for residents. They're preparing for potentially heavy rain and strong wind from the hurricane, but then they're getting hit by really large tornadoes that you usually don't associate with a tropical system. So a lot to clean up from from Milton. But the good news today is that at least Milton has left the state of Florida and it is no longer a tropical system. It is moving away. It's going to get a little close to Bermuda, but it should stay south of Bermuda. So now that Milton is gone and we have to ask ourselves, do we have anything else to worry about? And we're already tracking another area of concern. It's called now Invest 94L. National Hurricane Center has given it that name because it is a tropical wave. It's a weak area of low pressure that they are investigating to see if there could potentially be some tropical development. Here's the good news with this. There's a couple of things that are good with this. The chance for tropical development is very low. Over the next two days, a low 20% chance. Over the next seven days, also a very low 20% chance. 